Hi! In this video we are using Substance 3D Designer to create cables and pipes with spline nodes. Let's go over the key nodes and parameters we'll use first. For the spline bridge list node we need to place splines before. Then it generates new splines between the input splines. Bridge spline amount defines the number of generated splines. Bridge splines type lets you choose between straight linear or smooth quadratic Bezier splines. The spline warp node displaces the splines based on an intensity or vector map. With sampling mode I have control over the mapping of the values to the splines. Texture space applies the value in place. Horizontal along splines applies each row to a different spline and horizontal along spline random offset x and y applies a random offset for each spline. Start and end attenuation are used to control the warping effect near the start and end of the spline. A value of 1 means that no warping is applied. The spline sample height node uses an input height map to modify the height of the input splines. With sampling mode I control value to spline mapping. Texture space applies values directly in place. Horizontal along splines assigns rows to distinct splines and horizontal along spline random offset x and y adds random offsets per spline. The scatter on spline grayscale node is a powerful node to place patterns along the input splines. The scatter mode defines how the patterns are scattered along the splines. While shape amount lets you choose a specific amount, shape spacing automatically adjusts the pattern amount to fit the specified even spacing. The spline height multiplier uses the spline height value to control the pattern luminance. Let's start with a spline polyquadratic node and reduce the points amount to 3. We lower the points coordinate x values to 0 for the cable start position and evenly space the y values between 0.1 and 0.2. Now we connect it to another spline polyquadratic node with a points amount of 3. Use a points coordinate x value of 0.5 and increase the p2 y value to 1. Let's duplicate the first spline polyquadratic node and connect the output of the second one to its inputs. To connect all links together, we press 2 for material mode. Now we just increase the points coordinates x value to 1 for our cable end position. These splines represent the path for our cables. Keep in mind that the order of the splines matter, so we have to pay attention where the start and the end of the cables will be. Further we use a spline bridge list node with a bridge spline amount of 6 and the quadratic Bezier bridge splines types to build our bridges between the splines we created. To displace the splines we use a spline warp node. As intensity map input we use a Perlin noise node with a scale of 10. Let's reduce the warp intensity slightly to 0.05 and choose the horizontal along splines random offset xy sampling mode to individually displace each cable. A start attenuation of 0.7 and an end attenuation of 0.6 helps to have less displacement at the start and end points. By adjusting start and end offset of the spline bridge node to 0.5, we have control over the flow of the cables and can clump them together. For height control, we add a spline sample height node and use an anisotropic noise node as height input. Let's switch the sampling mode to horizontal along spline for individual values along each spline. Now we connect it to a scatter on spline grayscale node. Because without background input the node defaults to 8 bits, we manually switch the output format to 16 bit for better quality. We reduce the shape spacing to zero for a continuous scattering and switch the pattern to paraboloid for a nice cable shape. Let's further lower the scale slightly to 0.008 for thinner cables and introduce spline height multiplier with a value of 0.8 for the height. For the pipes we begin with the waveform 1 node. Adjust the samples to 4 and reduce the wave number to zero for a simpler result. Now we increase the noise to 1 for higher variation and choose the second pattern for sharp right angle shapes. Let's connect it to a transformation 2D node and tweak the offset x value to 
Then we manually scale it in y direction to cut just one line across the view where the pipe comes in place later on. We join it to a blur HQ grayscale node for rounded corners and reduce the intensity to 5. To get a path, we use a mask to path node and reduce decimate path to 0 for a high detailed path. With a path to spline node, we convert path to splines, which are needed for scattering. We connect it to a scatter on spline grayscale node and change once more the output format to 16 bit. Let's reduce the shape spacing to 0 for a smooth pipe. Switch the pattern to paraboloid and increase the scale to 0.015 for thicker pipes. Now we forward it to a levels node and reduce the level out high value to 0.47 to lower the height of the pipe. Let's further join it to a blend node. For the base of the brackets, we take a shape node, reduce the size x to 0.33 and forward it to a blend node. As foreground, we use a gradient linear 2 node and forward it to a levels node, with an increased level in low value to 0.35. To blend it over the base, we use the multiply blending mode with an opacity of 0.7. Let's duplicate the scatter on spline node. Change the scatter mode to shape amount and increase the shape amount to 30. To get the bracket shapes, we switch the pattern to pattern input. Further, to get rid of some brackets, we increase the mask random value to 0.8. We finally connect it as foreground and change the mode to max lighten. If you want to learn more, you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching, and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.